On January 29, 2018, activists took to the streets in front of the gates of Girard College, a site of tremendous struggle for civil rights. They demanded an end to closed-door meetings between government officials and private industry on education policy. The members-only event that evening was hosted by the Chamber of Commerce and attended by representatives of the Mayor's Office of Education, the Philadelphia Education Fund, and the Read by Fourth Campaign. We say nothing about us without us. What follows are introductory marks um, made by one of the activists uh, directed to the mayor. We have a set of demands that I will include in the comments of this video, and we are hoping for a response, a public response to these demands by February 9th. Philadelphia Public School parent here. We're, we're getting ready to um, have some little activity coming on in association with tonight's Chamber of Commerce event. So I just have a few remarks. I want to make sure I get them on the record now. You might be repeating it again later, but if you're, you're tuning in, um, these are remarks are uh, directed to, to our mayor and those in attendance of the meeting tonight. Uh, tonight, the Chamber of Commerce is holding a private event here at Girard College with representatives of the Mayor's Office of Education, the Philadelphia Education Fund, the Read by Fourth campaign, and various corporate and nonprofit partners. They will be discussing their roadmap for growing business engagement in Philadelphia schools. Students were not invited to this event. Parents were not invited to this event. Teachers were not invited to this event. In fact, unless you were affiliated with the Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce, you did not even have the option to purchase a $35 ticket to this event. The website for this event stated that pre-registration was required and that as a privately sponsored event, no demonstrations or disruptions would be tolerated and that if there were dissent, those people would be removed and face legal remedy. And so I ask, is this the type of partner you would want for your school community? And why exactly should we trust the Chamber of Commerce with our children's futures? The Chamber of Commerce has presided over an economy that leaves a quarter of our citizens in, in poverty and 12% in deep poverty. The Chamber of Commerce sees a future where corporate interests mine Philadelphia's abundant poverty for profit. The social impact investment economy they envision will employ technological solutions to privatize public services through outcomes-based government contracts, while at the same time using big data to profile children as human capital commodities. The incubator for these programs is the Impact PHL initiative. And so, as concerned citizens, we will not stand idly by and let that happen because we are the true stakeholders of public education. We are parents and teachers and community members who know that our children deserve better than to become pawns served up to industry as a just-in-time precariat workforce trying to scrape by in an increasingly automated gig economy. So we stand here today to demand fair and transparent governance of our public schools. We demand that our schools be managed as a public trust for the people and not for private profit. We demand an end to closed door meetings where government officials make plans for our children that prioritize the interests of corporations and their nonprofit and higher education partners. We demand education based in human relationships and well-resourced classrooms that promote curiosity and community. We demand supports for literacy that include reduced class sizes, certified reading specialists, certified librarians, and functioning school libraries. We reject a model of education that ties our children to digital devices designed to extract their data and generate profit for private interests. We reject online learning programs like Waterford Upstart, an online preschool in use here in Philadelphia. We demand our city publicly renounce outcomes-based government contracts, pay for success and social impact bonds to finance public education and other human services. Such innovative financial instruments use big data to profile our citizens as human capital commodities. And so we stand here today in this highly symbolic space where in 1965, for seven months, Cecil B. Moore and the youth of North Philadelphia led pickets around this wall. They fought tirelessly to access educational opportunities denied them based on the color of their skin. 
And we stand here today on their shoulders as our schools disintegrate and our children and teachers face unhealthy building conditions, overcrowded classrooms, and a profound lack of resources. And this is due to intentional austerity. Public funds withheld from public education to create impact investment opportunities for venture capital. It is a strategy per per perpetrated by those who are attending tonight's event as they cloak themselves in false charity. Mayor Kenny, our schools are not a charity. Cardboard checks and volunteers do not make up for the tax revenue our children lose to abatements for the elite. These so-called community partners have an obligation to pay their full fair share of taxes and pilots and vigorously advocate for full public funding of our schools. And even as you laud this moment as one of progress, we stand here exposing the truth. Local control means nothing if exclusive events like this one take place with participation from the Mayor's Office of Education. We stand here to witness a fraud. In addition to being a parent of a Philadelphia Public School student, I am also a member of the Saturday Free School. We meet weekly at the Church of the Advocate and on February 23rd we launch a year of reading the visionary scholar, writer and activist William Edward Burkhart Du Bois. In celebration of the 150th anniversary of his birth, we are inviting people from all over the city to join us as we experience and discuss his revolutionary writings. Through education for liberation, we believe we can reclaim our humanity and build the kind of future our children deserve. And so, in closing, I share these words from his essay, The Immortal Child, published in 1920 in the book Dark Water, Voices from Within the Veil. Can we teach revolution to the inexperienced in hope that they may discern progress? No, but we may teach frankly that this world is not perfection, but development. That the object of education is manhood and womanhood, clear reason, individual talent and genius, and the spirit of service and sacrifice, and not simply a frantic effort to avoid change in present institutions that industry is for man, not man for industry, and that while we must have workers to work, the prime object of our training is not the work, but the worker, not the maintenance of the present industrial caste, but the development of human intelligence by which drudgery may be lessened and beauty widened.